But, <laughs> but we are so honored to have spent the last couple of days here. I, I said it the other night. I didn't know I had kinfolk up here. This is family in here. And you have been so favored by God to have these type of apostolic leaders leading you. Can we just honor the Rosellis? My wife and I think the world of you all. I mean it, not just saying this. We, we think of you often. You come up, we talk about you, and so we're just grateful for the kingdom connection. You see, let me let y'all in on something. I am God's favorite child. No, no, you're not. No, you're not. You think you are, <laughs> but, but I'm the one because he connects me with all these amazing people, and so we are forever connected. I'm like the dog you shouldn't have fed. I'm just, I'm going to keep coming back to the house. So I'm coming whether they invite me or not. I mean it, man. This is this. I found a connection. So my wife and I are so grateful for all of you that have hosted us. And listen, David is first class. A first class young man. He has been just ministering with us, attending to us, and I finally get to meet the champions and that he's been talking about. And so thank you for allowing him to serve us this week, and I really appreciate everybody. Listen, you may be seated. I'm sorry I did not know y'all were this hungry. Good Lord. There are like 10 books left. So you're going to have to run. <laughs> Ten people. Now, don't you leave service early. <laughs> but this book will be out next week. You can order it on Amazon, Barnes & Nobles, Books, Books a Million. I think it's even Target, Walmart. Wherever, wherever books are sold, you can get this. And it'll be released next week. But I wanted to bring some, and I thought I brought plenty. But y'all are hungry down here. And so um, I believe it'll bless you. I've been preaching some parts of it, jumping around. And some of the things that I'm going to share today are in the book. So order it because I believe it will bless your life. And it'll be, it'll be something you'll be able to go back to time and time again and just glean the revelations and just meditate on them so that you can just walk in it. Now, Today is something special. Go to Ephesians chapter number two. We've been, and I'm going to ask a favor. When I get done at the end of my ministry, can I have the music team come back up? And yeah, y'all going to work hard today. Y'all going to work double time today. And just begin to sing whatever you kind of feel in your spirit for the moment as we're going to minister a little bit and watch God perform his word. And so also I have some of my wife and I best friends in the world, and um, they were in Texas with us, and God called them out. And God called them to New York. And I was like, it better be God. No, this is an amazing, amazing kingdom this is kingdom land. And they're here, and I just saw them, and I just, I just want to wave it, y'all. My wife didn't even know y'all were here, but there are the Godfrey's there. Y'all, these are my friends. Can y'all tell my friends hello? So don't you leave before, before we get a chance to chat a little bit. I love y'all so much. Thank you for coming. I'm a preacher. I got my friends here now. It's over. We have been tracking this revelation of what happened when Jesus was raised from the dead. And he began to speak to me some time back 
just because when you when you pray for higher, deeper levels, God always precedes every manifestation or demonstration with a revelation. Because until you get the revelation, faith cometh by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. And he began to tell me that all of my answers that I was seeking for in a new dimension of functioning and operating, he said to me this phrase, Isaac, you don't need a new thing. Because I was searching for something new. He said, you need a sure thing. And he says, because there is nothing new coming, but rather what you need is a revelation of what has already been done. In other words, what he was saying is the work has been finished. I don't need to do anything else, but you need to get a revelation of what I've done. And God has so impregnated his word and his revelation and the kingdom that you can get revelation after revelation after revelation and never exhaust the depth of God's word. And so he began to give me fresh revelation, fresh revelation on the resurrection. And I have been preaching for over 30 years two years and ministering, but I, I had never seen this about the resurrection. And so I've been ministering about it, and you just got to go back and watch that because I don't have time to recap it all because I got to just pick right up where I left off. But the bottom line is we've been talking about that God, when he raised Jesus from the dead, he wasn't just raised from the dead physically. He was also raised from the dead spiritually, that he was the living lamb of God, the spotless lamb. But he became sin and his sin was infected to the point of spiritual death. And after three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, he came out of the heart of the earth, resurrected, leading a great company of resurrected beings with him, picked up his body, breathed on his disciples, and said, Receive ye the Holy Ghost. At that time, nobody could have the Holy Ghost in them. They could only have it up on them. But now since their spirits have been resurrected, it, now we can house the very spirit of God. Now the reason he said receive ye the Holy Ghost and then told them to go to Jerusalem and wait for it is because it is the Holy Spirit that does the work of resurrecting your spirit. Therefore we've been talking about in Ephesians chapter number one that the power of the Spirit of God, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead. What happened to you when you got born again is the very Holy Spirit of God released power into your spirit and literally resurrected the thing from the dead. And if you're born again, you sit here as a resurrected spirit. Look at somebody say, if you can look inside these clothes, if you could look inside these clothes, if you could see what my spirit looks like, if you could see my spirit. So the reason that's important is because it is the resurrection that is the hinge upon which every door of revelation to the work of Jesus is made known to us. And then we talked about how Paul had this revelation given to him. He wasn't even taught it. He caught it from the Spirit. That by revelation, he, he was the one that followed Jesus through the cross. See, 
Peter, James, and John, and all of those that walked with Jesus, slept with him, ate with him, really didn't have a revelation of what happened after the resurrection. And so the Spirit of the Lord um, said it to me like this. He said, the, the disciples followed me to the cross, but then Paul followed me through the cross. And it is Paul that found out what happened after the resurrection that Paul had to go back and tell Peter what happened. And they got the revelation of what happened in redemption. So it is Paul that God handpicked to give us these revelations of what happened after the resurrection. And then he prayed that we might know it. The reason we have to know what happened to Jesus in the resurrection is because the same thing. I didn't say same thing. There ain't no anointing on correct English. I'm just trying to tell you. The same thing happened to us. That we were resurrected with him. And the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same spirit that raised us from the dead. And our spirits have been quickened and made alive. Therefore, Jesus was the firstborn among many. Anybody in here been born again? We are the many that would come behind his resurrection with our own personal resurrection. So when you look at me, don't you bring up anything that happened before I met Jesus. Because that man is dead and gone. This is why now if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. It's talking about your spirit was literally regenerated, resurrected. Now, this is crucial to know because then we went a step further and said, if now you have a living spirit, then you cannot have a living spirit and still act like a dead man. And how now that we've got these resurrected spirits in the image and likeness of God on the inside of us, then now we've got to bring our mind in alignment with our spirits. Our spirits were resurrected, but our minds have to be renewed because we were trained uh, under a dead spirit. And so now that you have been born again, you can't think like you used to think. You can't speak like you used to speak. You can't act like you used to act. You've got to bring your mind into renewal, and then you have to bring your body into subjection. The woman of God was just talking to us about carnality. The thing about it is you have to understand your spirit was born again, but your body wasn't. It still wants what it used to want. That's, that's why the Bible says you have to present it now as a living sacrifice. <laughs> Woo! Here's the thing about the body. You have to present it as a living sacrifice, which means that's the old covenant parallel, which means you got to take it and throw it on the altar. Set the thing on fire and burn it. But here's the thing about the body is that the appetites that are in the flesh, they don't get to burn up like the lamb. Once you set the lamb up there and burn him up, he turns to ashes. But how many of you know you can kill it today and it'll be alive again tomorrow? And you got to start the whole process again. That's why Paul says, I die daily. I have to kill it every day. And that's what confuses a lot of saints. It's because they have a moment at an altar only to wake up the next morning and find out that moment is gone. Because you don't get to kill the body. You have to keep it under. And every time it wakes up, you have to keep it back under. And you have to constantly present it as a living sacrifice to God. 
Now that I'm a resurrected spirit, there are just certain things my body can't do no more. There are just certain things you need to make up your mind right now. Now that you have been resurrected, there are just certain things you can't do no more. No matter how you feel it, it doesn't matter. Throw the thing on the altar and tell it you can feel it all you want to, but you won't get to do it. Because now I have the power to subdue my appetites. See, when I wasn't resurrected, I didn't have the power to do it. But now I have the power to bring my appetites under subjection so that I get to walk spirit, soul, and body in alignment with God. Now, all of that was Friday and Saturday. But then Saturday afternoon, we found out that it doesn't stop with the resurrection. That the resurrection was the resurrecting of my spirit, but my salvation is not complete until I get to the ascension. So we're going to call this the ascension dimension part four. Some of you are going to have to go back to, I just gave you a recap of part one, two, three. But part four, the ascension dimension. What is that about? That is about understanding that salvation didn't just change your condition. It shifted your position. Which means if you have been born again, if you have been raised, if your spirit has been resurrected, something shifted simultaneously. That the moment you got born again, not only did you receive the nature of God, you received the authority of God. And it is this dimension that I'm finding out even pure, holy, um, sanctified people are still struggling with. Some of us can come to grips with the fact that I'm supposed to live pure and holy and clean and a righteous life. But when you start to tell them the authority they, they, that they have, they seem to struggle with it. I want to share with you this morning that you have the same authority as Jesus Christ. You were born again and the Bible says in Ephesians chapter number 2 verse number 6 and this is the verse I want you to look at and then we're fixing to unpack this authority and, and like Peter says you're about to be turned into a weapon of mass destruction. It says verse number 5 even when we were dead in sins hath he quickened us together by grace you have been saved. And hath raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus. Okay. I'm through laying the foundation. Let me just lay it on you now. Salvation shifted my position. It raised me up. And made me sit in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Which means I occupy the same rank of authority in the realm of the spirit as Jesus. Which means I am in a spirit spiritual class of authority that is far above principalities and powers. Far above powers, demon spirits. Far above everything in that realm. Far above angels. Far above everything in that realm. You and I are the highest ranking beings. In the spirit realm. 
Now, why did God give you such a high rank in the spirit realm? Is because you have been given the assignment to control spirit beings. You do understand that this is why God made you part spirit. You are not just a physical body. You are spirit. And this is why God created you spirit in flesh. So when you look at me, the reason I keep harping about the, the spiritual dimension is because when you look at me right now, you can't see me. You're not looking at me. You're looking at my body. I'm on the inside of the body. And it is me, the spirit, that's given this body life. That's why when I exit my body, it has to die. <laughs> because my body can't keep functioning without my spirit in it. But my spirit can keep functioning without my body. Oh, it's a real dimension. And you today have got to quit seeing yourself through the natural lens. Now, don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. I love it when my wife gets into the mirror and she does her hair. And then she asks me what it looks like. And you always men have to say it looks amazing. Uh, don't, ever, don't ever say what you think. And so I love it when she gets in the mirror and she puts on the eyeshadow and the makeup and all of that and comes out looking just gorgeous. All of that is great, but while you're in that mirror, you need to see what you look like in the spirit. Because all of that is just dust and flesh. But on the inside of all of that hair and skin is a resurrected spirit with the authority of God Almighty. That's the way you got to see yourself. That I am a spirit being wrapped in flesh and I have authority. Watch this in two realms. That God has given me dominion in the earth and then he has given me dominion in the spirit. Why must you understand this? Because this is the position you occupy. You have been seated in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. Oh, I got to have my chair back. because Somebody give me a chair. Just, just snatch me one. I, I can't preach without my chair. Uh, I'm just more anointed with my chair. The Bible declares that this is a position of supreme authority and power that when he raised Christ, he seated him at his right hand. And then the Bible says, and he raised you up and seated you with him. You don't even sit beside him. You sit with him. Which means you and Jesus occupy the same seat. If you had any idea what you look like to demon spirits. That the moment you got born again, God let every principality and power know just like you have to submit to me. Now you have to submit to them. Now, you and I both know what happens to demon spirits when they rolled up on Jesus. Y'all know what roll up mean down here, don't you? It's the same thing that's going to happen to them after they roll up on you after today. You are about to put some things in their place. Now, I have to give you this caveat. 
because this is something that has to be known to you. God ain't going to do that for you. You better hear me today. Because it is your responsibility to do it. You say, now wait a minute, preacher. Show me that in the Bible. I'm glad you asked me. <laughs> he says, upon this rock I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. I came to tell you that there is nowhere in your Bible that God told you to pray about the devil. Find it. Show it to me. It ain't in there. You want to know why? Because the devil is not to be prayed about. The devil is to be cast out. There are other things we need to pray about, but the devil ain't one of them because you have been given authority to deal with him. This is something that the church has a hard time receiving. Because we don't want the responsibility. But you've already been seated in heavenly places. You have got to deal with him. That's why your Bible says when the enemy comes at you, don't pray about him. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Which means as long as you whining and crying and complaining about what's happening in your life, Satan will chase you as long as you're running. But the moment you turn around and quit running and say, now wait just a minute. The Bible declares if you resist him, he'll start running from you. I'm looking for a generation that will say, I spent my last day running from devils. From this day forward, they go be running from me. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He says, I've given you my authority. Deal with it. Which means Satan is praying that you never get this revelation in you. Because if you do and it becomes real to you, his days of functioning in your life are over, over, over. I'm telling you, after the day, some of you have been saying, my God, I've been under attack and under attack and under attack and under attack and under attack. Oh, but it's going to change. That's what principalities are going to start saying about you. I've just been under attack, under attack, under attack, under attack, under attack, under attack. Every time they get up, they start binding me. Every time they get up, they start casting me out. I can't do nothing in that house. I can't do nothing in their life. Come on, shout. There's victory in the house of God. We've got authority here. You have the authority. You have been given it so that you can rule over principalities and powers. Today is the day you become the master over principalities and powers. Can you turn my mic up just a little bit? I'm going to holler all morning. Which means what God did with you, 
The Bible says he did it to prove to principalities and powers the manifold wisdom of God. <laughs> Satan wants to be a God. He wanted to be a God when he wanted to ascend to the heaven. Then Adam sinned. He wanted to become the God of this world. He wants to rule. God sent Jesus into the earth, resurrected his spirit, sat him in a spiritual dimension of all authority, and then pulled all of us up here with him and gave us the same authority to show to Satan, you ain't no principality. If you want a principality, I'm about to show you one. Point to yourself. Say, I'm a greater principality. Which means you'll never start dealing with principalities until you understand you are one. I'm the principality. We are the highest ranking things. And if Satan wants to mask around like he's a principality, it's time for the real kings, the real princes to stand up and let the enemy know you ain't no principality. I'm the principality. Oh, you got to receive this. Put your hand on your head and say, I am the highest ranking in the spirit realm. Which means it takes a principality to cast down a principality. It takes a higher rank. And in the realm of the spirit, you are the princess. Oh, see, you can't handle it. You can't handle it. You can't handle it. See, if I would have said that about Jesus, you would have shouted. But when I said about you, you still didn't. Yeah. You are a principality. It just means a high-ranking official. It means the first ruler. It means the first in rank in order. This devil ain't no principality. You are. You're the princes of heaven, which means you rule in the spirit realm over everything. Now, you and I both know it does no good to have authority if you won't exercise it. Because what I just told you ain't something that's going to happen. If you've been born again, you've been seated. <laughs> and it would be a shame for you, for you to be seated here and not rule. Which means the only thing you can do with this authority is waste it. Because you already got it. So look at somebody and say, you might well use it. You already got it. And it's over the realm of the spirit. See, it is this revelation. Because authority has to be exercised. That's like a police officer walking around on the street, sees somebody break the law, and then calls headquarters to say, hey, do y'all want me to do anything about this? That sounds like you. The light bulb just went on on some of y'all. You're going through situations and circumstances, attacks of the enemy, and you're asking God, Lord, Lord, what do I do? And the Lord is saying, what you going to do? You ain't got to call headquarters to deal with that. I've already authorized and deputized you to deal oh. This is why I gave you authority. You represent the Godhead. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying to you. The authority that you have was delegated to you by God Almighty. He is the one who 
delegated you the authority so that anything that happens unlawfully, illegally, you have the right to arrest it, y'all. <laughs> oh my God. This is why it says you will bind and you will loose. It is your job to be the law enforcement officers of heaven. Oh my God. See, 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 this is what Jesus marveled at with the centurion. Matthew chapter 8, you're going to find the story of Jesus healing everywhere, laying hands on people. And the Bible says some, he healed them all. But up to that point, everybody Jesus healed, they were either in his presence, he was in their house, he laid hands on them. But something happened with the centurion that changed the game. The centurion came to Jesus and says, I have a servant that's lying at home paralyzed. And I want you to heal him. Jesus says, I will come and heal him. The centurion said, you getting it? The centurion said, I know some don't nobody else know. He says, you don't have to come to my house to heal my servant. Now, this was a game changer because everywhere else Jesus went, he was in the house, he was laying hands, he was, he was speaking over people, they were in proximity, he was telling them to rise and walk, but this man said, you don't even have to come to my house. Stand right where you are and speak the word only and my servant will be healed. Jesus said, what? <laughs> Jesus marveled. He turned to his disciples and said, did you hear what this man said? They said, what do you mean? He said, did you hear what he said? He says, I don't have to come touch him. All I have to do is open my mouth. I don't even have to be in the same city. All I have to do is open my mouth from here. And the servant will be healed over there. Jesus marveled and said, how do you have that kind of faith? And the man says, because I know some of your disciples don't know. I understand authority. And when you in authority, you always know who is in authority because authority does not move. Authority has things move for them. <laughs> because ability is released in activity but authority is released in words I'm going to slow it down and say it again so you can get it authority is not ability ability is activity it's enablement it's it's, it's, it's power where we get dunamis or dynamite. Something is explosive. So it's released. You can feel it. That's the anointing of the Holy Ghost. That's ability. But authority is a whole different thing. Authority ain't released by ability. Authority is released by words. Which means when you're an authority, you just speak. When you in authority, people in authority just speak. Now, you can be an authority and still work. But the highest form of authority is to give command. 
And the centurion said, watch this, I am a man in authority, and I have soldiers under me. And when I say to this one, go, he goes. And when I say come, he comes. And then I'm also under authority. Which means I recognize that when I give commandment, the soldiers obey me. But what they're really obeying is who's over me. Because your authority is only as great as the one backing you. And he says, I've been watching you, Jesus. And I've discovered something about you that your disciples don't know. That you operate by authority. Everybody else thought he just operated by ability. But the centurion saw, "Uh uh-uh, this is authority. Which means you ain't even got to come there and be there physically. If you open up your mouth, whatever is underneath your authority has to obey. Therefore, you don't even have to be there. No more than I have to be there to tell my soldier to come here. All I got to do is send the word. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, now, why is this important for you? Because you can't deal with spirits physically. Spiritual warfare is not combat. You can't hit a devil. You can't shoot a devil. You can't slap a devil. You can't punch a devil because they're not physical. So you can't deal with them by anything you do in the physical. You have to deal with them uh, how you function in the spirit. And in the spirit realm, you function by authority. Which means uh, you do warfare with words. My mouth is my weapon. And when I open my mouth, spirits have to become subjected. And the centurion said, if you open your mouth, that condition has to obey. Child of God, you got to hear me. A closed mouth is a defeated life. Because you are abdicating your authority. Let me go back to that again, see, because the Bible says you're wrestling against not flesh and blood, see. You're dealing with principalities and powers and spirits. So how am I going to deal with the spirit? I can't hit it. I can't shoot it. I have to take authority over it. Which means you rule your world with your words. Now, let me say this before I go deeper. (laughs) See, this is why. You have to understand that your authority won't always work in somebody else's life. Because there are so many people who pray for people. And then when nothing happens or the opposite of what they prayed for happens, they start to get dejected or lose faith. Don't you ever lose faith in your authority about what happened in somebody else's life. Because ultimately, they are in authority over their own lives. And oftentimes, you could be binding devils that they're loosened. 
Oh, you got to hear me. So, oh, I'm, oh, I'm about to unmask the devil in this room. <laughs> See, it is hard for you to cast out what somebody letting in. Because demon spirits, oh, 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 get this. Demon spirits seek human people for a couple of reasons. Number one, for expression. Because the spirit is tormented if it can't express itself. So it wants to seek human beings so that it can express its nature through them. That's why you can't play with devils. Because you are entertaining personalities that are seeking to express themselves in you. But another reason they seek humans is because demon spirits hide behind human wills. In other words, if a spirit can get you to give them place, they are hiding from the authority of others to deal with it. And this is what makes prayer and intercession so powerful and it makes it so tedious. It's because if I'm trying to get you delivered from something that you have opened your will to, then that spirit does not have to obey me if you are giving it place. So, in essence, the spirit is shielded from my authority. And they do it. They hide behind human wheels because they know that as long as you're praying and speaking and decreeing, they don't have to go anywhere until the person, I said the person, the absolute person and their will declares, I no longer want this. I don't no longer want to be tormented by this. And then they say the magic word, will you pray for me? Uh-oh. 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 That's why the devil hates agreement. Because agreement allows me to use my authority on your behalf. And you might be struggling with it, but I ain't struggling with it. You might not feel like you can deal with it, but I can deal with it. And when we get together, one can chase a thousand. Y'all don't hear me. And two ten thousand, we can start casting out devils on mass level. Some of you that have been praying and praying and praying and praying for people, don't you quit. But I want you to change your prayers. Change your prayers that their eyes might be enlightened. Pray that the God of this world will quit blinding their minds because the moment they declare, I don't want it, it's got to go. It's got to go. As long as you want it, it ain't going nowhere. But the moment you set your will against spirits, they have to go. Woo, matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, let's just start praying in the spirit right now. Some of you have been dealing with your children. You've been struggling with them because spirits have gotten in and influenced them. And you're trying to tell them and you're trying to tell them, but they keep fighting and they keep fighting and they keep fighting you. And that's why they keep doing what they're doing because they have yet to relinquish their will to the spirit of perversion or manipulation or deception. But we're not going to quit. We're going to keep loosening angels. We're going to keep praying for people to come in their path for the moment is coming that they're going to wake up like the prodigal son and come to themselves. I prophesy your sons and daughters will come to themselves. 
Lebosian tabababa. Come on, this is spiritual warfare. I'm coming after the spirits that are coming after them. Come on, just a few more seconds. Open their eyes, open their eyes, open their eyes. Send the right plan. Send the right man. Send the right woman. Arrange the right situation where they come to themselves. You're not going to have them. You're not going to have them. You're not going to have them. Spirits of deception. Spirits of perversion. Spirits of manipulation. The spirits of this age, spirits of witchcraft, spirits of addiction, you are not going to have them. In the name of Jesus. Woo! Holy Spirit, open their eyes. Listen, you, oh my God, this. Listen to me. If, if you ever run up on a spirit that does not have place, he has to go. Be seated. I'm glad y'all came up, but I ain't, I ain't quite ready. So just, just have a seat. That's just the first wave of glory. Woo! Woo! That's just the first wave. See, see, demon spirits are afraid of you. Oh, <laughs> They're afraid of your authority. This is why they come to steal. They have to, they have to move around undetected. They have to find a way in and out of your life where you don't discern. That's a spirit. Because if you ever discern, that's a spirit. You can shut it down just like that. Oh my God. I'm actually drinking this water for you for the next point I'm about to make. Everybody say authority, authority. is a position, is position, which means it's delegated to you. It comes from placement, from an authority that delegates you authority, which means there is nothing you have to do to have authority except receive the position. But some of you, bless your darling heart, You're like the CEO making you the head of the company and you tipping around the office like you don't want to offend nobody. And you're the same way in the spirit. God has handed you authority and you still tipping around like, mm, I hate to ask you to do this. I guess I was trying to be nice. I guess I can just say it like I feel it. Some of you just ain't mean enough.
Because even though Jesus is a lamb, look at somebody and say, you need to know when to roar. I'm glad that you're this nice little sweet Christian, but you got to know that not only is a lamb in you, the lion is in you. And there comes a time where you have to put on that mantle and tell the devil, I wish you would. You're not going to get any pity from the devil. He only responds to authority. And watch this. Watch this. Your Bible says that God set you here and gave you this position. Okay, I'm going to have to be done after this point. Yeah. You can't, no, you can't take no more. You can't take, you can't take, you can't take no more. You can't take no more. He gave you this position by grace. <laughs> Which means I didn't do nothing to get it except receive Jesus. And when I did, he resurrected my spirit and then just handed me his authority. Which means you don't have to conjure up anything to release this authority. No, you don't. You don't have to go on no fast. Now, there's a place for fasting. But that's to deal with your soul. That's to deal with your body. That ain't got nothing to do with authority. To deal with spirits, you can cast them out while you're eating a steak. <laughs> this has nothing to do with my position. I have the position. Which means all you have to do it's just open your mouth and say, stop it. No, you ain't got to conjure up 15 scriptures. This is authority we're dealing with. Once again, that's like a police officer rolling up on the scene of a crime and saying, wait a minute, I got to pray. She tatadaba son toko shetadabana. See ma 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 ba ba ba. Ah, okay, let's go. The thief gone by then. See, 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 see. The enemy wants you to think you have to work for it, so that he can keep you doing some else to prove you got it and then some else so you can prove you got it and then if you don't feel like you got it you won't act like you got it and you're waiting on a spasm or you're waiting on a chill bump or you're waiting on to grit your teeth no none of that has to do it you were born with it you, it's yours by inheritance you woke up with it y'all don't hear what I'm saying when you got up after bed this morning, you woke up in authority. You went to the kitchen in authority. You put your clothes on in authority. You drove here in authority. You are never not in authority. So that doesn't give you the position. There's a place for all of that. There's a place for intercession, praying in the Holy Ghost, building up yourself on your most holy, faith praying in the Spirit, releasing mysteries. But that has nothing to do with authority. You don't even have to feel like you got it. 
Doesn't matter whether you feel it or not. You want to know why? Because sometimes you feel like a nut. And sometimes you're done. <laughs> This ain't got nothing to do with your feelings. You got it whether you feel like it or not. You are in authority. Because the devil will make you think, oh, Lord, you ain't read the Bible today. Oh, Lord, you ain't been in the Word all week. And you tell him, no, I haven't, but that ain't got nothing to do with me and you. Because you are under my feet whether I read it or not. You shut up and get out my. Oh, shout it. Let the devil know we ain't taking it no more. Not having it. Ain't taking it. Get, get, get out my life. Listen, I got to go. Listen, stand up on your feet. Listen at me. Listen here. I didn't get a chance to preach this because y'all had me preaching about other stuff. This authority is not to just be used defensively. This authority is not to just shut down things in the realm of the spirit. This authority is to be used to start spiritual activity. Which means the highest form of this is not just against the devil. You just tell him, shut up, move, and get. That's all time you need spent on it. Just stop. Just stop. I mean, sometimes we headed down the highway, you know, might have got caught up going a little fast. Have you ever passed one of them, one of them officers with a radar? And when you pass for they just... It's all it takes. You pull over. That's authority. And when you sense the enemy coming in and out of your life, all you do is say, you are in such authority that your whisper makes him tremble. When you catch him speaking to your mind and you're entertaining thoughts, you just tell him, shut up. I didn't give you the right to speak to me today. Shut up. I'm not going to entertain this. You are dealing with spiritual entities who are scheming against your life. Therefore, let me prophesy 2023 will be the greatest year of your life. Because you are going to use your authority to run the realm of the spirit. I don't have time to tell you that your prosperity is in that realm. There is a secret to getting money, <laughs> to getting blessing, to getting favor. You got to work the realm of the spirit. There's a secret to getting healed. You got to work the realm of the spirit. There's a secret to getting favor. It's all coming by the activity that happens in the realm of the spirit. And I'm pretty sure your pastor is going to lead you deeper into this. But you have to now become offensive. Which means when I wake up in the morning, I use my authority to set my day in motion. Me and my wife have coined a phrase, win the day. Say that after me, win the day. Win the day. Which means when I get up in the morning, I'm going to win this day. Everything that God has planned for my life this day, it is going to happen. 
everything that God wants me to do. I am not going to be hindered. I am not going to deal with demonic spirits. I ain't having it. You got to have this attitude because even though you have authority, Satan loves to disrespect you. He knows he has no business messing with you. He knows you have been given authority, but every day he's going to get up and test you. And that's when every day you got to get up and say, bring it on. See, some of you can't deal with that. You can't deal with it. That means whatever you're doing in my life today, I will take pleasure in shutting you down. Knowing that when I open my mouth, things scout in that realm. Not because of who I am, but because of whose I am. In other words, they know who's backing me. It's because of who I'm under. And remember me telling you yesterday, the demon spirits know it. Because they said, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? When you open your mouth, it is not to just release demons, but she said it a moment ago. Peter said it a moment ago, angels are waking every, every waking moment of your day saying, what do you want? Because your authority in the realm of the spirit is far above them. They have been sent to serve you. In the realm of the spirit, you get up every day and you commission, commission them after assignments, after people. There's some people in our life and our family that we're interceding for. And we're releasing these angels out there every day to just make their lives miserable in a good way you understand what I'm saying? because just like demon spirits influence people so do angels and I got good news for you there are more with us you got to act like you're a spirit being you got to get up in the morning saying, okay, I'm fixing to open up my mouth because my voice registers in that realm. <laughs> now, my protection, my provision, my destiny, my purpose, every ounce of favor, every door open, all the wisdom I need, all the revelation I need. And Satan, you will not hinder not one plan, not one purpose, every scheme I command you this day. You will not operate in my life. I know you can't. You know you can't. And you just start thanking God. And instead of walking around saying, man, this has been a terrible month. I've just been under attack after attack. You're going to start walking around saying, I ain't seen the devil in six months. I think he's scared. I think he's scared to come to my house. I think he, because the last time he came to my house, we beat him up so bad. The demon spirits went back to Satan and said, please don't ever send me down there to that household again. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. Demons tremble at the very mention of his name. And you and I are in that name. They tremble at the very mention of your presence. So I'm going to pray for you in just a minute. And here's what I want you to see. When I pray for you, I'm not going to pray for your situation. I'm going to talk to it. We're going to take authority over it. And if you will release yours. And I release mine. The Holy Ghost is going to back our authority. Oh, y'all don't understand. The Holy Ghost is the ability. My assignment is to release the authority. When I release the authority, he releases the ability. Which means <laughs> my job is to show the adversary my badge. If he don't respect my badge, 
then the officer also has a gun. The gun is to enforce my badge. And the Holy Ghost says, if you'll say it, I'm behind you to back it up. Anybody ready to say some things and decree some things and declare some things and say, now Holy Spirit, release your power. And when you have authority and ability, you have supernatural power. So if you've been dealing with anything, this has been on my spirit. This has really been on my spirit. Those of you, and I don't want you to be embarrassed. I don't want you to be ashamed because, because after the day it's over. But if you've been in here and you have been tormented by fear, anxiety, all of those things. And today you finally come into a revelation. Wait a minute. These are just spirits that are speaking to me. Uh, causing fear to come. God hasn't given me a spirit of fear. I'm not going to be walking around like this. I'm not going to be listening to the enemy tell me who I am, what I'm not, and what I'm not, and they don't love you, and I'm not have this, and you're never going to be this. You know, that you're entertaining spirits. And after today, you are not. You are shutting the door to your mind. And I want the privilege of helping you cast these things out. Canceling their assignments over your life. And if you've been in here and you've been dealing with that oppression, depression, anxiety, all of that. Real quick, I want you to get out of your seat and run down to this altar. Come quickly. Come on. Come on. Don't be ashamed. Because I'm fixing to empower you today. It's no shame to be under attack. The enemy is going to attack. But when the enemy comes in, like a flood, you have to raise up a standard against him. You are leaving here free. You're going to have the freest year of your life. You're going to have the most peaceful, the most enjoyable time in your life. Some of this stuff is coming through bloodlines. It's coming through what the enemy has done. Some of it's coming through heartache and things that happened in grief. And the door was open for those spirits to get in. But it's over today. It's over today. It's over today. It's over. It's over. It's over today. I feel the anointing. I feel the anointing of the miraculous in this room. This is it. This is the year you take back your authority. This is it. God has not given me a spirit of fear and anxiety, but a power, love, and a sound mind. My mind is going to be sound this year. This is it. There are too many of you for me to lay hands on. David, where are you at? Um, David, can you come up here with me? A couple of these I might lay hands on, but it's so many of us. No, let me just do this mass. I'm going to have to. I'm going to have to. Now hear me. Hear me, here's the first thing you got to do. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to think like this. You will always know when the enemy is coming at your mind, when what you are thinking always leaves you in a disempowered state. When what you're thinking makes you feel inferior, intimidated, timid, fearful, nervous, anxiety, because fear brings torment. You know it's fear when it starts to feel tormenting. What the enemy is doing is he is trespassing you have been resurrected you belong to God Almighty but he hates you he hates you because you're in God's image and the only place he can access is your mind your will your emotions he comes to affect you today is the day 
you get your authority back. Today is the day where no matter how you, helpless you felt to deal with this thing, today is the day your spirit is going to rise in strength. And along with me, you are going to decree to every scheme and strategy of the enemy coming after your mind and your peace. It is over. So say this after me, Father, I come to you as your child. As your child. Standing in your authority. Jesus, thank you for the privilege of raising me up and seating me in heavenly places. Far above principality. Far above. Far above powers. Far above. Far above spirits. Far above. And today, I stand in that authority. I stand in that And I command every evil spirit, everything that has hindered my emotions, I command every scheme, every strategy, every assignment against my mind. In the name of Jesus, I command it go right now. Right now. Now shout about it. Hallelujah. Go. Flee my presence. Flee my mind. Now, now, this is super important. This is super important. Now say, Father, forgive me for allowing the enemy to torment my mind. You gave me authority, and I will never let the enemy have this place in my life again. In Jesus' name, I am free now start thanking God and rejoicing just start thanking him it's over it is over it is over watch what I tell you your peace is going to come back your joy is going to come back it's done it's done now you watch what I tell you The next time the thought tries to come back to you of suicide or oppression or anxiety or addiction or whatever it is, you know how to defeat it now. You stand up and you say, in the name of Jesus, I'm not entertaining that. You flee my presence. And then you get in the word of God and you start renewing your mind. I'm telling you, you're going to walk in a joy and a peace this year that is unexplainable. Some of you have not been the same since that loved one died. Some of you have not been the same since you went through divorce. Some of you have not been the same since you had that issue in your family and in your childhood and spirits were unleashed, unleashed, treading this day in your life but I came to declare this is your emancipation proclamation my days of bondage and captivity are done you've got to do it you got to rise up and so father right now I feel the anointing I just release just come on, come on down here. Let's, let's just work. We got to work something. There's too much of an anointing. Now, when I lay hands on you, I am injecting into your spirit the substance you need. There are a lot of people behind you. I'm going to ask you to try not to fall if possible. But when I'm laying my hands, I am imparting into your spirit 
what you need. Faith. Woo! My God. Courage. Strength and wisdom. It's being released on the inside of you. It's being released on the inside of you. Receive. Activated in you. The joy. The joy of the Lord. The peace of God. Out of your belly shall flow. Rivers of living water. Out of your belly. Shall flow rivers. Oh. Out of you. In the name of Jesus. I charge your spirit. Jesus. Life is in you. I charge your spirit. Rise up, mighty woman of God. Rise up, rise up. Rise up. Rise up, mighty woman of God. Rise up in the name of Jesus. Oh, in the name of Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus. We release it. Come on, King. that mantle of authority that mantle of authority that rests in you I release it I release it I release that authority come on king I release that authority in you it's in you I stir it up I stir up the gift that is in you I stir it up in the name of Jesus I stir up the gift that's in you Oh, I stir it up. I stir it up. You will never be the same. You will never be the same. You will never be the same again. Of Jesus. So come on, my soul. Don't you get shy or be lift up Woo. your soul. The king in your soul. You've got a lion inside of your soul. This is it. Get up and this is praise it. the Lord. Come on, my soul. Don't you get shy or be lift up your soul. You've got a lion Father, we curse every spirit that runs in your family yeah. that had been given access to your bloodline. It might run in your family, but today it runs right into you and your authority. And we break the curses in Jesus' name. We cancel the assignments against our bloodlines. Go now. It's canceled. It's canceled. 
it's canceled. Those of you dealing with sickness in your body, put your hand on your body. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now remember, when Jesus healed the centurion, he said, speak the word only. There's so many of you that, who are at this altar that we can't lay hands on everyone and even those that are in this building. But thank God we can speak the word. Yeah. And I want you to believe that the authority of the Most High God is about to seize every spirit of infirmity that has attached itself to your body. And I want you to see as I declare healing over your life, I want you to see resurrection power shooting out of your spirit into your body, your hearts, your lungs, your kidneys, your bloodstream, your nervous system, your digestive system. In the authority of Jesus, we declare by your stripes, we are healed. Be healed in Jesus' name. Now, Holy Spirit, release your power all over this room, all in the balcony. Release your power. Oh, my God. Heal hearts. Hearts, lungs, heal, 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 heal. I want you to just lift your hands and receive it. He's healing my body. Yeah. The other day, my wife and I were in my office praying. And when we were praying, I felt the anointing of God surge through my body. And the Spirit of the Lord spoke to me. And says, Isaac, I am resetting your yeah. body. I am resetting your body. I am resetting. He says, I will restore health to you. Come on. Whew. That anointing is in this place. Yeah. He's working in your body yeah. to reset some things. Blood pressure is coming Come down. On. Sugar levels are being regulated. Hearing. I definitely have a specific anointing for deafness. Hearing, loss of hearing. I was just in Houston, three people up on the stage who had lost hearing in one of the ears or the other, totally deaf. The anointing of God opened all of their ears right there in front of the whole congregation. People were walking up handing me hearing aids and all types of things. I command ears to be open. Eyes to see. In the authority of Jesus' name. I command knees and meniscus and ACLs and joints. I command it in the name, in the authority of Jesus. Be healed. Oh, there's too many of us in here releasing our authority. The miraculous is happening right now. I speak to that cancer. I command those cells. You quit multiplying. I command the metastinization to break up. Stop it. Stop it, I said. In the name of Jesus.
Oh, we thank you. We were in Alaska, and the Lord gave me a word of knowledge about a woman on the front row that was dealing with, 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 it was, the, it was the, they had diagnosed her with the beginning stages of dementia. I didn't know it, but the Spirit of the Lord spoke to her, and I said, something about your head, something about your brain not firing. I didn't know it. She stood up, the glory of God hit her. That woman is free. God literally reversed dementia. And if you've been dealing with any of that in your life, the onset of it, we take authority in the name of Jesus. Your brain.